All right, welcome everybody. Nice to have you here. So today I'd like to talk about a topic which is um, that creation is an inside job. And uh, this is an important topic because if you don't know where to put your attention, then uh, you, you are not gonna get good results in your life. And um, there's this fundamental, seemingly at least, a fundamental divide between inner and outer. And most people tend to prioritize uh, the outer. And uh, that gives most people um, suboptimal results in their lives. And uh, so I want to explore this a little bit more today so that you can understand why it's uh, important and valuable to put your attention on your inner reality and, uh, and understand that that's the, the real source of, of your experience. That's where creation for you actually takes place. And, um, and hopefully by the, through, this, through this talk today, you will then uh, feel empowered to be able to uh, make that choice consistently so that you can start to have better results in your life. Um, so um, there's a, a fundamental law and this is a law that I just am inviting you to check out and see in your own experience to notice that this is true. And if you don't notice that it's true, then that's fine. You can, uh, that would be useful information, but just check it out. And that law is the law of attention. So whatever you put your attention on, that's where your energy goes. And so that's what you experience more of in your life. Um, and so if you are putting your attention uh, on the on on your outer reality then you're giving your power to your outer reality so if you say that there's something outside of me and that that thing outside of me is where the power exists then you give your power to that thing outside of you so if you say that uh i cannot do things because of these outer circumstances then that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy so then those outer things gain power due to you giving them power th through your attention. And then it, it turns out to be that then you seemingly at least cannot do the things that you otherwise would like to do because you've given that power away. So you say, um, you know, I'd really like to be able to uh, start my own business, but I can't because of the economy. I'd really like to be able to have a, uh, uh, a loving relationship, but I can't because this other person is a jerk. Uh, I would really like to be able to be healthy, but I can't because of whatever reason you think that you can't because of the uh, choices that other people make or because of some system outside of you or whatever it might be. Um, so well, this is how a lot of us are trained to think. We're, we're trained to think that um, the outer conditions and outer circumstances and outer uh, people and organizations and so forth have the power and that we have to wait for those uh, outer things to align with what it is that we want before we can actually begin to have success in whatever it is that we want. And of course, uh, as long as a person lives that way, then that person is likely to just be waiting a lot uh, and making a lot of excuses. And you say, well, you know, I, I, I would be more successful, but I, I, I can't be because of all these reasons, and it's pretty easy to find other people who will, uh, who will commiserate with you. You will also nod their heads and, you know, say, "Oh yes, yes, I understand. It's so terrible, isn't it?" You know, we would all be very successful uh, if only it wasn't for these things that are happening out there. You know, if it, if only it wasn't for the, you know, the narcissists, and if only it wasn't for the government, and if only it wasn't for all of those terrible abusive people out there and if only it wasn't for you know these um these economic policies and if only it wasn't for whatever uh, all of the other things you know the the inflation and all the rest of it so uh of course you're welcome to make whatever choices you want so if you would like to continue to live that way i mean i mean making the assumption that you might be living that way to to whatever degree you might be living that way you're welcome to continue to live that way. And that's totally up to you. So I'm not here to tell you what you should do. Um, I'm just proposing that you might find that it is um, empowering to consider that you might actually have the power within you. 
And um, this can this can ruffle some feathers. I understand. Sometimes people get um, uh, uh, upset about this idea because they are fairly attached to their uh, their their role as a victim, and so it can seem pretty threatening to um, consider the possibility that maybe the power actually exists within. But if you think about it, um, what is there really to gain in in uh, giving your power away? I mean, I guess you could you could say, well, uh, it's not my fault, right? I mean, you could do that if you say that it, it, everybody else is to blame. Then you could at least say it's not my fault. But um, I'm not sure that that's much of a consolation. I mean, if you're not actually achieving what you want in life, if you're not actually uh, satisfying and fulfilling your values and your goals in life, then uh, is it really a consolation just to say, well, it's not my fault? Uh, if you get to the end of your life and you have not accomplished the things that are actually meaningful and important to you, are you going to be satisfied with that excuse of it's not my fault? And... I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, only you could know the answer to that. I, I, I have my suspicions. I suspect that for most of us, at least, the answer to that, if we really tell the truth, is that you would, wouldn't really be satisfied. You would probably um, have some regrets. And in my particular worldview, um, that equates to then another time around the merry-go-round. So because the way that I perceive it is that this is all about desire. And if you have unfulfilled desires, then that gives rise to the next round. So you say, well, I really, I really screwed that up. I didn't um, achieve what I really had set out to achieve. So then you're probably going to try it again. And um, so in my view, why not do it? Why not just do it right now? You know, I mean, why, why put it off? Um, if, do you think it's going to be any easier later? Like, do you think, do you think somehow you're going to have an easier time fulfilling your desires, you know, 10 years from now or 50 years from now, or in the next lifetime or a hundred lifetimes from now, like at what point, uh, is it, are you actually going to follow through on it? And why not now? That's how I look at it. Why not now? I mean, there are a lot of, we can make up a lot of reasons, but I think if you look at it in the right way, it starts to become clear that none of those reasons are actually good reasons. Because if you really want something, then, I mean, if you want it enough, then you're going to follow through on it eventually. So why not do it now? Just get it over with. Uh, because a, a lot of the time, I mean, I've, I've found, and maybe you might also find that um, when you're actually doing something, when you're actually taking steps, then um, it's all right. You know, I mean, there might be, might be challenging. You might sometimes uh, meet with some of those moments where you say, gee whiz, I don't know exactly what the next step is, or this seems hard. But if you're fully invested in it and you're just taking the steps, then it's okay. You just, you're like, okay, I guess I'll figure it out. And if I'm tired, I'll, I'll take a nap or I'll, I'll go to sleep. And in the morning, I'll have some clarity and I can start taking the next steps. But uh, I think that a lot of the suffering comes from this, this kind of purgatory where we say, well, I, I would really like to, but I can't. I would really like to, but I'm not ready. I would really like to, but uh, I don't, you know, I don't yet have enough clarity, so I can't. I would really like to, but the economy is not good, so I can't. I would really like to, but other people are making it too hard for me, so I can't. Um, I think that's where the suffering comes from, is when we're just stuck in that kind of you know, inter intermediate, um, where you, you're, you're not actually fully in. And so my proposal is that you can, uh, you will likely find that it's very empowering to start to put your attention inwardly. And uh, this will help you to be able to 
um, have more clarity about what you want and it will start to help you to know uh, what you can do to achieve that. Um, when you have your attention on the outer stuff, then uh, I personally at least found that that's just really difficult because um, it really limits options. It's not usually clear what, um, what I could do to uh, produce the changes that I want if I'm focused on the outer. You know, if I think that, um, if I think that I want money and then I think that in order to have money, I need the outer circumstances to be different than what they are. Um, then it's not clear what am I going to do directly that will change those outer conditions. I could scheme all kinds of things that I could do that might indirectly produce those changes. But uh, I have personally found that that does not usually give very good results. It's usually, I, I have historically found that to be stressful. If I'm focused on indirectly trying to influence or manipulate situations or circumstances or others in order to produce the outer changes that I want so that I can then uh, tell myself that then I'll have permission to uh, achieve what I want. Then I have found that very stressful and it has not given me very good results. And I have, have not seen that, that tends to give other people very good results either, which is why I'm suggesting that this other way is to put the attention inward uh, because when you do so, then you can uh, actually start to produce the changes that are in alignment with what you really want. So um, hopefully, I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but maybe what I will say later will at some point make some sense. So he here's, here's the, the, the heart of what I'm suggesting is that the actual experience that we have is always manifesting from the inside out. And we can tell a story that is happening otherwise, but really, um, fundamentally, it's always actually happening from the inside out. So we are actually always the creator of our own experiences. But when we are putting our attention outward instead of inward, then we overlook the process by which we are creating that experience. And then we can mistakenly think that it's happening from the outside in. And then, of course, we feel disempowered. Um, and if a person has um consistently invested in the notion that life is happening from the outside in and that outer circumstances and conditions and people and events uh, dictate what the experience is, then at first it can be quite challenging to even uh, even really open up to the idea that I'm proposing to you. Because as I said, a lot of the time this can seem threatening to people. Um, so, I guess the first thing that I could recommend is just make it playful. Just let this be a playful exploration. So you don't have to agree. You don't have to accept anything. You could just maybe be curious about this strange possibility that maybe your experience could be created from the inside out. That would be one thing is just to kind of sidestep any of the, um, the, the, the sense of maybe threat or anything like that. Just make it a playful exploration. So this is, you don't have to take on any new worldview. You don't have to accept any of this. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to adopt any new philosophies. You don't have to change anything that you're doing in your life. This is just a playful exploration. So that might be helpful. Um, and so then with that, in that, um, frame of mind, just that it's a, a playful exploration, perhaps then you could start to be curious about this perhaps strange idea that your experience is uh, created from the inside out. So what does that even mean? We could just take a look at that. So I said, your experience is created from the inside out. So what is your experience? It's just get clear on that to begin with. So take a look and notice what your experience is. How do you know that you are experiencing? I 
I can propose some things that you might investigate. So you um, perhaps could notice that you are uh, seeing if you, if you have, everybody has some kind of perception of seeing, even people who are uh, blind because there's, there's an inner seeing. Okay, so there's this seeing that happens. So you could notice that. If you do happen to be sighted, then you might be able to see the screen, for example, or you could see your hand. So you might, might notice that that's probably part of your experience, part of how you experience. And you might notice that there's hearing. So hearing, you might hear the sound of my voice, for example. You might hear the sounds in the room or wherever you happen to be. Um, you also might, you could hear the sound of your own thoughts if you hear your thoughts. A lot of people hear their own thoughts. It's like there's a, a narrator inside the head that's thinking and, and saying all these things. Of course, when, when, you're, when you're thinking things, then you're also imagining things. So there's also that inner vision, inner seeing. So we, we construct images. So if I talk about a duck, like quack, quack kind of duck, then you might find that you construct an image in your mind's eye. If I talk about an apple, perhaps you imagine an apple. If I talk about an apple tree, then you might notice that you construct an image of an apple tree. And that's happening in your mind's eye, right? As we say. So we've got seeing and hearing, um, feeling. Do you notice that you, your experience consists of feeling? So you maybe feel like you could maybe rub your fingers together and notice that you can feel that. Maybe you feel uh, the sensation of clothing on your skin. And then you might feel things internally. Like you might feel sensations in your body. You might feel uh, things that you would call feelings, sort of a special category of sensation. And then, and then depending on how you construct these things in your mind, you might also have a special category, a special category of emotion, which is also felt for most of us, at least. So we've got seeing and hearing and feeling. Um, it's tasting. You might, might find that tasting is also part of your experience. So you could notice that. So like if you were to, uh, if you were to actually bite into an apple right now, then you might taste the apple. Of course, you just imagining uh, biting into an apple, you might notice that there's actually some kind of experience of tasting going on. If you've ever had that experience of, of biting into an apple in the past, at least. 
If not, then you, you could think about something that you have eaten in the past, something you have tasted in the past. And you could notice that it creates some, some kind of experience of tasting now, like a memory of tasting. I mean, because if you think about, if, like if you've ever bitten into an apple, and then of course there are lots of different types of apples, you know, you could maybe if you've ever bitten into like a, a, a sour apple, And then if you imagined, uh, like if you've ever, if you ever tasted coffee and you could notice that somehow, you know, the difference right now between those two tastes. So it's happening internally. Um, and then there's maybe also smelling, right? So you also smelling consists of. Uh, your experience also consists of smelling, at least for most of us. So we've got seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, and smelling. Anything else? Can you experience anything else? Nobody's, nobody's coming up with anything. I think, I think actually that's pretty much it. Somebody suggests existing. I would say somebody says touch. I would say touch is feeling. And existing, I would say, how do you know, the, how do you experience existing? How do you know you're existing? What allows you to know that? Somebody says dreaming. Yeah, well, how do you how do you experience dreaming? I've experienced the way that I've experienced dreaming is through seeing, hearing, feeling, smelling, tasting. I'm pretty sure that's it. Somebody says I'm still breathing. I would say, how do you know you're breathing? Probably because you can feel it, probably maybe maybe smelling, maybe hearing. You might hear your breathing. So I'm pretty sure that that's what experience consists of. Now, we, we combine all of those things in this... Uh, amazingly uh, complex tapestry, right? That we, and we say, you know, well, I'm, I'm dreaming, I'm breathing, I'm existing, I'm eating an apple, I'm drinking coffee, I'm going to the office, I'm in a traffic jam, I'm um, experiencing the sunset, I'm, you know, all these different things. And on and on and on and on and on and on. I mean, forever, we can just keep on coming up with different experiences. But all of those experiences are actually consist of these five senses. And the story is, I mean, we tell a story that says, well, you know, I'm, I'm eating the apple. The apple's outside of me. I'm drinking the coffee. The coffee's outside of me. I'm tasting the apple because I'm, I'm interacting with the outside apple. Maybe. It's certainly a possibility, but how do you know it? Have you ever, have you ever eaten an apple without uh, tasting, touching, hearing, seeing, smelling? Is there any other way in which you've ever had the experience of eating an apple or drinking coffee? or getting in a traffic jam, or seeing a sunset, or petting the dog, or any of these other things. Have you ever had any of those experiences without the five senses?
And if you've, if you've never had any experience without the five senses, can you know for sure that there is such a thing as an experience? Because if we, if we say it's an experience, it kind of makes it seem like there's a thing out there that's called the experience. But if we just experience through the five senses, might it be more accurate just to say that we're, we're, we're perceiving through these five senses. We're just perceiving, experiencing, perceiving. It's a, it's a, it's an action that's occurring through, through you that's happening through you. I mean, think about this, um, you know, some, some people, uh, hallucinate. Would you agree with that? Some people hallucinate. So they, they, they'll imagine that there's something objectively there that nobody else is able to perceive. How do you know you're not hallucinating right now? And isn't, isn't that basically what a dream is? I mean, when, when you're dreaming, unless you, unless it's a lucid dream, then it seems real to you. It's only after you wake up and you say, oh, it was just a dream. But while the dream is happening, then you think that it's happening a, a, outside of you. You think that that dream universe and the dream characters are all happening objectively out there. But when you wake up, you would say, oh, you know, it was just a dream. It was just happening in consciousness. Ha ha ha, how silly that I was so deceived. But how do you know that's not happening now? And I'm just proposing that there's... Uh, does not seem to be a way of, of actually uh, coming into contact with anything outside of oneself directly. So the only way to know about anything is through the five senses. And how can you know for sure that what you believe is objective and outside of yourself is actually objective and outside of yourself and not just something that you're hallucinating or dreaming or imagining. I don't think there's a way to know that. And so th this might just seem like an exercise in, uh, I don't know, strangeness or something but what i'm what i'm proposing is that this is actually empowering because then you can start to realize that all that you're ever experiencing is happening in you i mean where, where does the tasting smelling feeling seeing and hearing take place it takes place in you right I mean, have you ever have you ever tasted an apple outside of yourself? The, the tasting takes place inside of you, wouldn't you agree? And the seeing takes place inside of you. And the hearing takes place inside of you and the feeling takes place inside of you and the smelling takes place inside of you. It all takes place inside of you. So all of the so-called experience is taking place inside of you, wouldn't you agree? So the sunset and the tra traffic jam and the coffee, all of it is taking place inside of you. So um, If, can, can you start to see how if you're putting your attention outside of you, if you're giving external things power over you, then you're going to have a really difficult time 
achieving what you want because you're giving your power to something that you can't even come into contact with. Something you don't even know for sure exists. It might exist, but even if it does, you don't seem to have any way to actually come into direct contact with it. All that you can come into contact with is within you. But if you're overlooking that, then you're giving your power away. So this is just the setup then, because, because unless that setup was made, then most people would probably say, but, but, if, but if I want something, if I want some change, then I, I have to focus on the outside. If I want the money, if I want the person in my life, if I want the change in my, my physical body, if I want these external changes, then I have to put my attention on the outside because that's where the change needs to take place. Everybody knows that. It's clear as day, right? <laughs> I mean, it seems so. It seems so logical. It's like, I want the money. The money's out there. I need to do something out there to get the money. Well, I mean, if that worked, you, you wouldn't be here right now, right? I mean, because like, we've all tried that stuff. And some of it seems to work until it doesn't. And sometimes it just doesn't seem to work at all. I, I'll, I'll briefly tell this. Uh, I've told this story before. It's not that interesting of a story, but it, uh, when I was a child, um, they, 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 they used to be in where I grew up um, in many of the big box stores in the, in the, the chain grocery stores, there would be, um, arcade games in the lobbies that one would be enticed to put some quarters into some money into so they could play the game. Um, and I would, uh, often not have quarters to put into the, to the game, but I would stand there and pretend like I was playing because it would have a little demo thing playing to entice the children to come and put their quarters in the thing, um, to make it look so fun and entertaining so i would just pretend like i was playing and i would move the joystick and push the buttons and pretend like i was playing the game um and so it's sort of like life is a little bit like that uh that sometimes you're you're playing as though you're you're doing you're playing the game and sometimes you know you you're like i'm doing all the things outside of myself i'm uh, I'm pushing the levers and then things are happening out there that looks like I, I did that. So you can, uh, you know, you say, well, I, I read a book or I got the, the expert told me that in order to make the money uh, or to have the relationship or to do the thing, then these are the steps, the external steps that I need to take. And you take those external steps and, you know, it works. You say, okay, step one, step two, step three pull the lever, ka-ching, it works. And you say, ah, oh, look, that's so amazing, it works. And so you, you, know, you repeat, you repeat, you repeat, and it seems to work until one time it doesn't work. And then you scratch your head and you go, well, why didn't it work? Well, because like when I was the, the kid there in the, playing the arcade game, I could fool myself into thinking that it was working. Because sometimes things just kind of line up like that. But, uh, then the spell is broken. And then the, you, you have to start to take a deeper look and, and question what's really going on here. So what I'm proposing here is that if, you're, if you have not yet been getting consistent, satisfactory results, then start to challenge the idea that it's all outside. And start to look and see what I've pointed out, which is that it's actually happening inside. You are creating your experience from the inside. And it's up to you how far you wanna take this. So you could just take this just a little bit and, and that's fine. However far you take it, you'll have that much more power. 
So um, you, I'm not suggesting that you need to take this to the nth degree in order to get some positive results with it. You don't have to say, you don't have to uh, go all the way and say, well, this is all of this is a dream that, that's in, in my consciousness and the consciousness that I am. And it's all created from the inside out. You don't have to go that far. You could just start small and just start to notice, well, it does seem true that um, the only way that I'm able to experience is through my, my five senses, which it's an, it's an inner job that's all happening inwardly. So maybe there is something external. It's a possibility. There might be something external, but the only way that I interface with that, the only way that I experience that is through my internal experiencing. And so therefore, um, at the very least, doesn't it make sense that there might be internal filters that could have a significant effect on what you're perceiving? So even if there's something truly objective out there, isn't it at least conceivable that your filters, your internal filters, could significantly alter your perception of it. For example, let's say that you uh, you desire to have more money. And you might be thinking, well, in order to have more money, I need to do all these external things. I need to get, you know, I need to put together my resume. I need to apply for the job. I need to go to the interview. I need to do all these things. And, uh, and, and maybe that's not your worldview. Maybe you think in order to make the money, you need to start your own business and you need to do all these things. Whatever your worldview is, it doesn't matter. You, you might think you have to do certain external things. Well, um, how do you know for sure that you don't already have the money? I mean, wouldn't it be kind of crazy to go jumping through all those external hoops if you already had the money and your goal was just to have the money? And you might say, well, that's crazy. I know I don't have the money because I, if I had the money, I'd know it. Well, how do you know you'd know it? I mean, isn't it conceivable that you could, um, you, know, you know about blind spots? You know that, that, that we have uh, blind spots, like physiological blind spots, so that there's, I, I, sh I should have, done, I should have in advance thought of this and I would have come up with an exercise everybody could do, but there, I'm sure there's some simple exercise you can do to, to, to demonstrate to yourself your actual, actual blind spots. There's some point in your field of vision where you cannot actually see something. I think it's somewhere over, over around here. Um, but, but your brain just makes it up. Your brain just says, no, oh, there's something there. You can see it, but you can't actually see it. So your brain just fills in the gaps. Um, so this is happening. We have lots of blind spots and our brains just fill in the gaps. So we say, oh, everybody knows that it's just like this. Well, how does everybody know? Everybody's just telling them, telling them these stories, these common stories. So you walk around and you tell everybody, oh, I don't have any money. I don't have any money. And everybody else says, oh yeah, it's true. They don't have any money. But how do you know? Maybe the money is there, it's just in your blind spot. It could just be that the money is there in your blind spot. It's there, you're just not seeing it. So if that was true, if the money exists and it's actually there, it's just in your blind spot, wouldn't it be awfully foolish to go jumping through all the hoops trying to find the money? Wouldn't it be better just to identify where the money already is and then be able to see it. Wouldn't that be better? Wouldn't that be more efficient? So that's what I'm proposing is what if you tell yourself that you know things are the way they are because that's what you perceive. There's no other way, right? I mean, that's the only reason why you say that things are the way they are is because you perceive that. So if you say, uh, I, I want uh, better health. So you're, why, why do you want better health? 
Well, because you perceive that you don't have the health that you want. Okay, well, how do you know that the health is not already there? And you say, well, it's obvious. Obvious to whom? Well, obvious to you, right? Okay, and how do you know that? It's happening through your perception, right? Which is all internal and you're filtering things. Are you, are you seeing everything that exists? Do you actually think that you're seeing everything that exists? I mean, just like from a, from a scientific perspective. Sci scientifically, they're, they're, the, uh, the notion is that there's this vast, I, I think we could probably safely call it infinite uh, field of, of light but humans biologically perceive this very narrow band. So you're filtering things. And you say, this is, I know how it is. How do you know how it is? Because of what you're perceiving. So you insist that this is reality be based on what you're perceiving. But what you're perceiving is filtered. So how do you know that the health and the money and the relationships and the everything else, how do you know that's not already here? You can't actually know that it's not here. You just assume. And again, I'm not telling you what you should do. I'm just proposing some things to you for your consideration because this might be useful to you if what you've been doing up to now has not been giving you good results. So if there's at least a possibility that what you want is already here, do you suppose that it might be more efficient, a more efficient means to achieve what you want to make some adjustments to your perception? Sort of like, you know, those, um, stereograms, the stereogram images, where it appears at first like it's just random dots. But if you look at it the right way, then suddenly an image appears. So at first you think, because of how you're looking at it, you think it's just, there's nothing there, it's random, it's nonsense, it's chaos, it's noise. But if you change the way that you are looking at it, suddenly something emerges. It was there all along, but you didn't see it because of how you were perceiving. So again, how do you know that what you want isn't already here? You can't actually know that. You could just assume that it's not here and then you could go out there, so-called so in, in the objective world, trying to get it. But if that hasn't been giving you the results that you want, then consider that maybe there's something inwardly that you could change, which would allow you to begin to perceive what it is that you want. So then you could start to question, well, what is it that I'm doing? How am I doing my perceiving that's filtering things so that I might not be perceiving what it is that I want? And it kind of comes back to this I, the thing that I started with or early on, which is this law of attention. So whatever you put your attention on, that's where the energy goes. So if you keep putting your attention on what you don't want, you keep saying, I don't want this thing. I don't want this thing. I don't want to be in debt. I really don't want to be in debt. How am I going to get out of debt? Debt is such a big problem for me. I just need to get out of debt. I'm gonna, eventually, someday, I'm going to get out of debt. You can be very creative about how you're going to keep focusing on debt, right? You know, ever notice that? You're like, or, or anything. You can be so creative and still keep focusing on the same thing, just from so many different angles. 
And all that does is it reinforces that thing, right? You just, now you have so much clarity about all the, so many different angles on the thing that you don't want. All the different ways that you don't want to be in debt. <laughs> and all, all the different possibilities of how miserable it's going to be to be, to continue to be in debt. <laughs> how scary it's going to be when things get even worse, when the debt is even greater and when the, you know, when they come and repossess everything and how terrible that's going to be and how you really need to figure it out. You need to figure out how to get out of debt. <laughs> Someday I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to come up with the right scheme. I'm going to get out of debt. But you notice the common theme is the thing that you don't want. So what, what is happening is that you're fixing your perception on the thing that you don't want, which is creating that in, in your imagination. So will you see if, if you're focused on the debt or the, you know, the, or the, the narcissists or the trauma or the, the illness or the, you know, whatever, if you're focused on the thing you don't want, are you going to see what you do want? Probably not. I'm remind, reminded also of the, there was a, uh, so there's something called sleight of hand. You might know about sleight of hand. It's how a lot of magic works. Um, so the, the magician is very skilled at directing your attention where he or she wants your attention, which is anywhere other than where they're doing the thing that will then appear to be as magic to you. Uh, there was a, some, there was a, some, some, there were some people, I think at the University of Illinois, uh, some years back who did the, the, this research into something, a related kind of phenomenon. And they published a video that's probably, you can probably still find it on YouTube. Um, where I won't ruin it for you. Um, if you find it, you could just, uh, I don't know what you would search for. See, like you'd probably search for University of Illinois. Um, ba maybe basketball illusion. Maybe that would bring it up for you. Um, but it, it, it's all about where to put your attention. And if you, if the, your attention is directed in a particular way, you will be amazed at what you will not see. So you might, you might check that out because it's, that's a pretty good example of how something can be right there staring you in the face and you will not see it. Um, and so it's, this is why putting your attention inwardly is so powerful is because it's all about where you're putting your attention. And internally, if you pay attention, if you pay attention to what's happening inside, you'll notice where your attention is going out of habit. Your attention goes to everything that you don't want. Just, just notice. Do yourself a favor and just for the next week, every day, observe as much as possible where your attention is internally. Notice what you're thinking about. Notice what you're imagining. And I, I can promise you that to the degree that you are unhappy with things in your life, to exactly the pre precise same degree. That's where your attention is going internally. You're thinking about those exact things that you don't want, that you're experiencing. So uh, if you want to make the change, then this is the good news is you can make the change internally. And it's not through force. So this is really, really important. You, you can't force yourself. You have to relax because you have to become more aware. It's all about awareness. 
there's no there's no way that you can force yourself in this whole process because the more you force the more that you um tense up and the more that you're 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 not actually going to be able to see what's staring you in the face but the more you relax the more you'll actually start to notice and through that you'll have choice because you'll start to realize that you don't actually have to keep doing that you don't have to keep looking at things in the same way you don't have to keep doing things in the same way within yourself you actually have more options but that comes through this relaxation and the realization of the choice and this is why again a lot of people don't have success is because they're trying to force things they're just trying so hard they have to just keep trying harder and harder and harder and harder and as a result they get more and more tense which limits the internal options and therefore the internal clarity but the more that you relax and you're just aware of what's happening, just notice, just relax and be aware. Notice where your attention is going internally. What are you thinking about? What are you imagining? If you do that consistently for the next week, uh, that would be a fantastic start. Then you could just keep doing that, uh, but at least do it for the next week because you will start to notice through that, that you have more awareness, more options, and it allows you to begin to shift your attention to what you do want. Because that comes through the awareness. If you don't, if you cannot be aware of what you're already doing, you're not going to be able to make the change. But when you become aware of what you're already doing, then you can make the change. And it happens through relaxation and awareness. So as usual, a lot of words to say something very simple. Um, but if you follow through on what I've suggested, then it will be worth it. It will have been worth listening to all the words to say something very simple. Um, so as usual, that's really the main thing is you've got to actually put it into practice if you want to get the results. So I really encourage you to do so. Uh, if you, and, and, and you don't have to, you don't have to do, I mean, you don't have to do anything. You could choose to do it. Um, but if you, if you chose to uh, take me up on the offer and explore that over the next week, you don't even need to do it for, uh, long stretches of time for it to start to have positive results for you. Even if you just do it for a, a minute here and there consistently each day, you will start to notice positive results from that. In fact, even if you just started to notice just for a second at a time, and you just do that multiple times throughout the day, you would start to notice some positive results from that because, um, and I'll just, I'll just wrap up with that, that, um, the frequency is more important than the duration because it's about establishing that new habit. So just as often as possible throughout the day, but even if you just did it for like three times in the day, that would be a great start. Just pause and notice where your attention is internally. Just notice what you're thinking, what you're imagining, and just allow yourself to relax even if just for a few seconds. And uh, by doing that consistently, then you will start to notice some positive changes. Now, I'm, you know, you just do that for a few seconds, three times a day. Um, in one week's time, I'm not promising that you're suddenly going to have all the things that you want. I'm, I'm just, you might, I mean, that's possible, but it's more likely that you would just start to notice some positive shifts, more awareness. It might not be monumental, might be small, but it's something that you can grow upon. It's a foundation. And uh, that will be far more useful to you than 
I can say this with great confidence, that will be far more useful to you than uh, easily 99.9% .9 of everything else that you will find on YouTube. True, it's just absolutely true. It'll be more useful to you than trying to follow the perfect diet, more useful than trying to you know, follow the perfect exercise routine, more useful than trying to perfect your, uh, you know, your stock trading uh, system. It'll be more useful than all those things. Not that those things are all uh, useless. I'm just saying that the real foundation, in my view, is the inner awareness. And when you have that as a foundation, then everything can start to work for you better. So uh, that's all I'm going to say today, for now, at least. Uh, for those who are here live, I'm happy to stand for the group coaching. And for those who watch this on YouTube, I just want to make a few uh, closing comments. So first of all, if you're watching this on YouTube and you would like to join these live, you're welcome to do so. And you can get that information for how to do so by uh, going to my website at joylot.com and signing up for the newsletter. And when you do, you'll get an automated uh, response with the information for how to join live. And by the way, you'll also get the uh, free ebook, which is the five uh, fundamental laws of creation, which is really um, quite excellent. <laughs> I, I don't and I can say that with hum humility. It's really um, quite useful information. And I do recommend that people check that out because it can uh, give you a, a huge advantage in your life. Um, and that's free when you sign up. And um, the other thing is just for those who are interested in my support and on, on an, in an ongoing basis, uh, to help you to achieve your goals and fulfill your your true desires in life, you may be interested in the Manifesting Truth program, which is a paid program that I offer, and you can get more information at uh, joylot.com slash manifesting dash truth. And I think that's all I have to say. Um, so I'll just also say to people watching this on YouTube, blessings to you, and bye for now.